morning everyone my name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel Carla being crafty where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I'm involved in and a little bit of life thrown in um, today is my floss tube number 101 and it is Sunday it is July 25th so I guess this is the last is this the last video in July will we hit August uh, 1st next Sunday uh, let's see six or seven yeah next Sunday will be August 1st so this is the last July video um so uh, I want to say welcome to those of you who have not found my channel yet uh, thank you for stopping by today I'm glad that you did find me this is Bagheera for those of you who are new um, he is my, my big old black cat uh, does not make an appearance in every video but um, every so often when I sit down here to start doing a video, all of a sudden he gets extremely needy and meowy and needs just a little bit of attention. And then he'll jump down and go sleep on my bed while I'm doing the video. Um, so again, welcome to those who are new. Uh, welcome back to those of you who have been following my journey on uh, YouTube for the last two years. Um, I am enjoying it so much as you guys know. And um, I am so glad that I have been able to um, make so many of you uh, floss tube friends. So um, thank you. I want to give a big thank you to uh, Catherine Sandmeyer for uh, using the Buy Me a Coffee link this week and giving me a little bit of monetary uh, kindness. Um, I really, really appreciate that. It is linked down below for those of you who might want to use it. It is completely not uh, required or expected, but uh, when someone does decide to give me that little bit of monetary uh, uh, acknowledgement, um, it just makes my day. So thank you so much, uh, Catherine, and, um, and any of you who want to do the same, it's down below. So it's there for you. Um, so what have I been up to? Um, this was a weekend where I went over to my brother and sister-in-law's, uh, Friday night and came back this morning. So I'm a little bit tired today, a little bit, a little tiny bit headachey, um, just from maybe lack of sleep. Uh, um, you know, I love, love, love being over there, but of course I don't sleep that great anyway. And when you're not in your, in your regular space, sometimes, um, I, I was up several times in the middle of the night last night. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling great. So, um, I think after I finish my video today, it's going to be a very chill day. Uh, I have groceries coming. They may actually show up during this video. So if all of a sudden there's a knock on the door, that's what it is. Um, and so those have to be put away and I have dishes to do and clothing to put away that I brought over to my brothers because that's where I do my laundry. And uh, other than that, I think it's going to be stitching and relaxing today for me, um, which I'm actually looking forward to. Um, we went swimming yesterday, which was like a total blast. I realized that I haven't actually been swimming in so long. I've gone to the pool, I've walked around in the pool, I've splashed around in the pool. We actually swam yesterday and uh, it felt great. It really did. Um, for somebody that, you know, sometimes I have uh, some back and knee mobility issues and stuff, being in the water is just great. Like, I love like bending my knees and jumping around and because it just feels great in the water. And, and I feel like it's good because I'm stretching out those muscles where they don't get to stretch out. Um, on land. <laughs> so um, that was really fun. And I think that that's going to be maybe um, a summer activity that we are going to do for the next month or so while it's nice and warm because the pool was empty. It was just us there and it was really beautiful. So we had a really good time. Um, so the other thing that kind of happened this week, and I, I have to say up front, I did get permission to kind of like tell the story or tell this happening. Um, but I wanted to share it with you guys because it is something that um, I am feeling so happy about, really. So I haven't seen my stepkid in quite a while, almost a year, I don't know. Um, and I told you guys last week that she would be coming over um, during the week, and I was really excited about that. But I also was, um, I don't want to use the word apprehensive, but I was wondering, questioning if she had something important to tell me. And it turns out that uh, she did and 
what it is is that I'm going to be using the pronouns he and him for my stepkid Taylor from now on and um, I could not be prouder of this young man for um, doing the work, going through therapy, doing what was needed for him to realize his true self and his true happiness. And I have to say, I've known Taylor since uh, I met him when he was 13. And it always was an awkward, uncomfortable kind of person. And, and really, when I saw him on Wednesday and he told me his, his path that he's on right now um, and that he is starting uh, transitioning, um, I have never seen this person more happy or content and I just, I could not be happier for him that he is coming into his own and feeling comfortable in his skin and feeling happy and content. Um, it just, as a, a parental figure who loves a young person, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy. Um, because as I said, I've, I've never seen him this content and, and at peace with himself and, and his path. And, you know, he said he was a little bit apprehensive to tell me, um, there had been like a few little hints like on Facebook and stuff, social media, that I was like, that it, there was some reference and it used the pronoun him and, and or his, and, and I was like, is that a mistake or is that, that, that Taylor's trying to tell me something or tell the world something? And so I kind of thought that there might be something, um, but of course it's the kind of thing that somebody has to share with you. You can't like, like worm that kind of information out of them when somebody's comfortable then they're going to share it and um and what i think is great is that taylor is comfortable sharing this with the world um so uh he said he was a little apprehensive and i was like that's crazy i love you i want you to be happy um which he was very happy <laughs> that was my reaction um for the most part uh, family members have been very supportive, um, with the exception of his brother. Um, but everybody else is on board and just happy that Taylor is happy. And, um, so I just wanted to share that, that I am really proud to be an ally. I'm proud to know and love this young person. Um, he's going to be 25 this year. So, you know, what a, what a great time to be coming into his own as, as the adult and the man he's meant to be. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to share it because I'm just very, very happy for him. And I told him I will screw up occasionally with the he, her, she, him, you know, pronoun thing, because obviously I've known Taylor as a girl for the last 12 years. Um, but that's okay. So as long as I'm trying <laughs> and I am trying, I'm trying to be very respectful and use the correct pronouns and, uh, adjust my thinking that Taylor, um, is, uh, man, I almost said boy, but really a man. <laughs> um, so of course, because I'm a stitcher. So what is the first thing that a stitcher does when, um, an event happens? Good, bad, momentous, tiny, what do we do? We go, we find a cross stitch chart, um, which of course I did. Now, what was funny was that, um, a couple days before Taylor came over, actually, I was like doing the, you know, floss tube number one search. So you can find some new floss tubers. And I found, um, D these 20 stitches, um, who put out their first floss tube video, like about a week ago now, I think, I think it was four days when I watched it and just the most delightful person to watch. And I had known this, but Dee and Carrie are the ones who did the trans pride tapestry. Um, so of course Dee was talking about it on their video. So I had just seen it. And then when I saw it, I mean, I'd seen it before on other people's channels, um, but I had just seen it again on Dee's channel. And, um, and when I saw it, I'm like, that's really pretty, but I don't really have a reason to get it. And, you know, other than just trying to be supportive, 
Um, I don't have a reason necessarily to stitch it. And then Taylor came over and I was like, hey, do you like this? And I showed it to him and he's like, that's really cute. And so I'm like, haha, I have a reason now. So I went and I got the tapestry, which is this gorgeous unicorn. And I, I don't know if I'm going to use the as charted because you know me, I tend to like change everything. And I'm really thinking I would like to use a lot of etoile in this because I haven't used it very much. And I think it would be a perfect pattern to use it on. The only thing is, is when I saw this tapestry like held up, I'm like, oh, that's such a cute little thing. And I'm thinking it's going to be this little chart. This thing is, is freaking huge, man. It's, uh, it's almost 200 by 200. It's like 194 by 193. So this is not a small chart. This is not a finish it in a couple months chart. This is a big endeavor. So, um, I'm thinking I might, start it this fall um and then just work on it like I do everything else um there is an awful lot of white in that unicorn um I was actually even thinking if there was a way that I could kind of change it to do like long stitches or or needle paint or something to just kind of make it go a little bit faster so that's something I'm thinking about as well but I was really happy to get this chart, um, which the proceeds are going to help support um, trans right groups and things. It, there's there's a whole listing on here of, of all of the the um, organizations that the purchase of this chart support. So, um, but anyway, I got it. Um, I am happy to stitch it. I am happy that the person that I love that this is representing is in a really good place. And, um, yeah, so that is, that is that journey or that story for this week. And it's not my journey, it's Taylor's, but, um, again, I'm glad to be an ally. I'm glad to be a person who is here for him for whenever he needs me for whatever reason. And, um, yeah, so we kind of have a vow not to let it go so long. I mean, obviously the big portion of the reason that we hadn't seen each other for so long was the pandemic, but also because he was undergoing these changes and I don't know that he was comfortable at that point um, discussing it. So now that's all out in the open and he's planning on coming over more often. Um, he also doesn't have Hulu and I do, and there is a show, a dog grooming show on there that I made him watch the first episode because um, Taylor is a trained dog groomer. He's not working as a dog groomer now, but, um, anything having to do dogs, he's there for it. So, um, so he has to come over to watch the rest of those episodes. Right. Um, but we had a great time together and I'm so glad to see him again. And I'm so glad again to see him I'm so happy and content. Okay. So that is the story about my awesome step kit on to stitching. Um, Okay, so I don't have any finishes this week, and um, when I talk about new starts, th that's kind of a story in itself, and I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go a little bit out of order with some stuff and kind of talk to you about um, everything with this, uh, and then we'll get into whips and regular haul and stuff like that. Um, so, I'm talking about my Enchantress of the Abyss, which... Uh, those of you who watch me have known has been like an ongoing saga as far as the fabric that I'm going to stitch it on. So, um, this is the pattern of the chart and I really, I just wanted to start it in August. I just, I fell in love with it and I want to do it. And for some reason, August is my mermaid stitching time. This is a Bella Filipina Enchantress of the Abyss. I just love her. Um, I think part of the reason I want to stitch her in August is because she's got this like really peridot colored tail. Peridot is the August birthstone and my birthday is, is August 15th. So, um, and she's got the purple hair and I don't know. I kind of feel like if I was a mermaid, you know, and maybe that's what I kind of do with charts. I've noticed like, you know, even like Bellatrix and stuff. It's like, if I was a, if I was an enchanter or a wizard, that's what I would be. And so if I was a mermaid, this is what I would be. So maybe that's, you know, maybe I'm just completely, um, narcissistic and just pick patterns that I see myself in. Uh, that could be, I don't know. 
Okay, so anyway, so I want to start this, and so I've been having this drama on what I'm going to stitch it on. Um, I did last Sunday put together my flosses in my, the way that I do, and I've shown you guys this before. Um, I do it on these plastic floss cards. Uh, I use one side, I put hooks at the other side because it's just easier to flip through that way. And, um, yep. So, anyway, I put those together. Um, and in doing that, I'm glad I did it because I realized that there's two silks in here that I didn't have, so I had to order those. But my drama has been the fabric. So, when I went to Vegas, I got this gorgeous piece of Crystal Mystic. Love it. It's it's so beautiful. But it's a linen. And when I got it, you see how like it shimmers, the dark blue and green, which is exactly what I wanted. It was a linen, and I was like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stitch on it, but I thought, no, you know what, I'm going to get it anyway. I'm glad I got it because it's beautiful, and I would have regretted not getting it. But I will be honest with you guys, I gave it a shot this week and tried to start stitching on it, and it so is not going to happen. It took me like 20 minutes to do four stitches, which I actually put in 10 stitches, and I had to take them out constantly. I just couldn't see, I couldn't see this fabric. It doesn't, you know, I had my, my stitching glasses, which are like four time magnifiers. And normally that's just perfect for me. I couldn't see the holes. Um, I tried putting light behind it. I could see the holes then, but the light was like shiny in my eyes and was uncomfortable. I just, I couldn't do it. And when I was like, okay, these first four stitches are, horrible. I cannot do a huge pattern on this. I'm going to hate it and I'm going to stick it in a drawer and I'm never going to work on it. And I just, I, I don't want to do that to the pattern because I love it. You know, I, this fabric, it's beautiful. And maybe I will work with it on something small. Maybe I will just keep it in my stash and pull it out and go, this is so pretty. Maybe I'll give it away. I don't know, but it's not going to be the fabric for Mermaid of the Abyss or Enchantress of the Abyss. It's just, I can't. So that was the first option. The second option um, was fabric that I dyed, which was this Lugana. And I think it came out very pretty. Um, the problem is it's not as dark as I would like. Uh, it looked absolutely perfect and gorgeous wet. But as you know, fabric dries lighter and it dried lighter and then I dyed it again and it still, you know, I couldn't get it as dark as I wanted it. Um, I think Lugana, that's just the nature of Lugana. You're not going to get it as dark. If you go and look on um, any of the hands, I was like, let's say Bestitch Stitch Me because she does have good pictures where she'll have whatever the, the colorway is and then she'll show it on linen and Lugana and um, Ada, it looks different and Lugana is always way lighter. Um, it's just not as vibrant. And so I do like this. I do like it. It's, it, it's kind of a compromise. And I actually started the chart um, to kind of see what it looked like. Um, so I started it on this. But this would work but the problem the second problem I'm having with this is I am afraid that this piece is not it's going to be big enough to fit the chart but it's not going to have a big enough margin and I'm going to end up having very little choice when I go to actually finish finish it um it it shrank up a little bit I mean this was a 28 count um, and it is now, after the dyeing and everything, it's about a uh, 30 count or 32. It's, it, it's between 30 and 32, to be honest. Um, and it's 16 inches. And ideally, in a 28 count, I would want it to be 19 inches. So we're talking, you know, we're going to have an inch, inch and a half on each side. And I just don't think that that's going to look as nice as I would want um, because I think this started out as a 17 inch piece of 28 count and then shrunk down to 16 inches, but you know, anyway, 
so that that's a dilemma in and of itself so I have this fabric but again I am really worried that I'm gonna do all this work and get this gorgeous piece and then I'm gonna have it short on the sides and not have options for the framing um, as an aside I don't know if you guys can see I never know when I'm filming actually how much like edge is gonna be on here but I have my octagonal um, little uh, shelf unit over there over there anyway um, which you guys have seen before and if you can see it you'll see that there's less stuff on it and I had my mermaid at the top now it has the diamond painting that my friend gave me and my mom I got a second octagonal shelf unit because I really like it and I put it in my bathroom and I put the couple of mermaid pieces that I've already done in there and that's where I'm planning on putting more of my mermaid stuff as I complete it okay so back to Enchantress of the Abyss. So we've gone through two of my fabric options. Okay, so then I told you last week that I had ordered a piece of fabric flare um, and was hopeful on that. So I didn't know you could get fabric flare in uh, an even weave. So I tried to order it in an even weave, um, sparkle even weave. I think again, because even maybe even with the printed fabrics, it doesn't seem as dark as the picture, but I'm afraid the picture is Ada. So I got it, I got it in the mail this week. And two issues. One, again, it's not as dark as I was expecting, although it is very pretty. Second issue is, uh, do you see any sparkle? Cause I don't see any sparkle in that. And I requested sparkle and I paid for sparkle and I didn't get sparkle. So, um, when I got this, it came with, um, it came with a little sample, which is cute. Um, but it also came with this paper that said, you know, before you do anything else, if there's a problem, call us. I called that number, left a message. The next day I went on the website and I left a message in their customer service line. And this was Thursday and haven't gotten any, any response. Um, which kind of bothers me that, uh, I would think that if you get an email from a customer saying that they did not receive the correct order or that there was something wrong with their order that you would respond fairly quickly. Um, so that kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, so I don't know. I really wanted sparkle for this mermaid. Um, and I want to start it. So I don't want to wait another like two weeks for them to decide what they're going to do about this. So again, pretty fabric, completely good fabric. I don't know if it's the fabric I want to use. So we're down to my last option, um, which is that I went on Amazon and I bought a piece of 19 by 28, 14 count, sparkle white Ada, which I am planning on trying to dye this afternoon again and see if I have a better result with the Ada and the dyes that I used than I did with the Lugana. This is like extremely, extremely stiff, but I know that it's starched. And so when I um, go to dye it, I'm gonna spend a good bit of time just soaking it and getting all of that starch and stuff out of it first. So it will soften up and then I'm gonna try dyeing it. And I'm hoping that because it's Ada, which is 100% cotton, it will take the dye better and turn out more of the color that I want. So, um, the saga continues. And so I still don't know, uh, if I will be using this once it's dyed this without the sparkle, which I know for some people will be no big deal because they don't love sparkle, but I do love sparkle. And for the mermaid, I just envision it with sparkle. Or if I will continue on this fabric and, um, just deal with little margins at the end. So those are, those are where it stands right now.
again, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm hoping, I'm hoping now that this kind of, this turns out perfect, but I don't know. I don't know with the dyeing. Um, I did look on the RIT site and they said stuff like adding, uh, salt to the dye bath. I've never done any of that. I've just done it in my jar using my method and everything's always turned out perfectly for me, but this is the first time I'm trying to get a color that I'm having trouble with. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. That is, that is where I am on that, on that saga. Okay. So, so I kind of had a start because I did start stitching on that, but I'm still not satisfied that that's where it's going to end up. So I don't know if that actually counts as a new start or not. <laughs> okay. So, um, on to whips. So the other things that I worked on this week, um, I can, you know, I say this all the time. I feel like I didn't do that much, but you know, here I have five things to show you. And, um, yeah, so I brought this over to Erin and Stacy's. Now what was funny is, um, I remembered to bring everything, right? And I remember the scissors and I remember my needles and it's already on a hoop. Uh, I forgot my stitching glasses, which seriously, I can't, I can't stitch without them. I can't, I just can't see well enough. Uh, my regular reading glasses that I use for everything are like two times, which is fine. I don't need distance glasses, but for stitching, I need, I need the higher glasses and I'm used to them now. So it's kind of like, I have to have them, especially if I'm stitching anything small and this is hard anger. So, um, I do carry a purse project and I'm like, Oh, I have glasses in there. And I opened them up and they were, they were broken, like right in the middle. So, um, I got the duct tape from Stacy and I taped my glasses and it was probably pretty ridiculous to see me. <laughs> and they, of course they didn't fit right. Cause you know, and so I was constantly adjusting them, but I persevered and I was able to stitch on my moon fairy hair. And, um, I got the fairy's legs in and I just now need to fill in kind of her, her bottom and the, the swing. And then the rest will just be filling in the moon, which will take quite a bit. Oh, and, and filling in the rest of her wing. Um, it will take quite a bit because as I said, this is hard, hard anger. So they're tiny stitches. Um, and so it's easy, but doesn't particularly go super fast. Um, but I think this is really pretty and I like kind of having a fill in project. So that is what I did over the weekend when I was at Anastasia's. Um, I did a little bit on All Hallows Eve, uh, Lila's Studio All Hallows Eve. Just, I don't know why I hadn't worked on it in a while and I thought it would be fun to work on. So um, I finished, well I didn't finish, but I worked on the, um, the uh, sign some more. I finished the 31st and then I worked some more on that yellow on the sign. Um, again, this is Leela's studio, All Hallows Eve. Um, I have obviously made some color changes. Um, and it's funny, I, uh, I inspired and now I'm forgetting her, her name on YouTube. Shoot. I will link it below. Um, it's a new channel that I started watching and she was inspired by this and wanted to do it as well. And she changed the hair color to this gorgeous, like tealy color. Cause that's how she does her hair. And, um, I thought that was pretty cute and I'm sorry. I'm not remembering your name. Um, I'm not, I'm not remembering, but I will link it below. I have like people to watch, uh, Flossy channels to watch. So please look below and you will see, um, those channels. And, um, and also I will link, uh, Amy, uh, Sprinklestein stitches cause I'm doing this with her. Um, we actually were doing, uh, this as a all, all Hallows Eve in, uh, May. <laughs> Is that when we did it? Um, I think May, June, April, I don't remember anymore, but that's when we started it. We'll see if I get this done by, by, uh, All Hallows Eve this year. I don't know if I will. But I don't mind so much. <laughs> okay. Um, I worked on my Wind Moon Fairy 
this week once. Um, this is a gold collection, Dimensions Gold Collection, um, art by Mimi Thomas. So this is a kit on kit Ada, 16, I think this is 16 count. Um, You will notice it changed this time because I kind of got that little kitty in there. Usually I say it doesn't look any, like anything yet. Um, just like blobs of blue and, and gray, but, but the kitty's in there. No backstitch or anything, but you can kind of see where it's going finally. on Star Trek this week, which is a chart I'm doing for my brother. Um, this is, it's actually four charts from Fangirl Stitches on Etsy. Um, I'm currently working on Next Generation. Um, I completed uh, the original series already, and then it will be, of course, uh, Deep Space Nine and then Voyager underneath. Um, I was at my brother's yesterday. We actually watched The Trouble with Tribbles. So, as you can see, original original cast is done, except for uh, these two guys need some eyeballs. And I started in on Next Generation. So, this is actually Picard. Um, he needs a face. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is the start of Worf. He's got that the band thing that goes across him, which I'm doing. <coughs> Excuse me, with a twelve. I just threw my needle minder on the ground. Oh, goodness sakes. Okay. Trying real hard to get it together here. Okay. All back together. Okay, so I worked on that one night. This is on, what is it called? Um, I just want to say Mirror Mirror and that's not it. Um, Looking Glass by Under the Sea Fabrics. And Hello Trip. was my first Bella Filipina and realized that I really like these patterns, which is why I searched for it and found in time to subdue this. And I went up and worked quite a bit on her neck and face and hair. So she's starting to kind of come to life there. This is on a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of um, fabric hand dyed by Rolanda, which by the way, I did check out hand dyed by Rolanda looking for something for In Time of the Abyss, but again, nothing is like dark enough. So that <clears throat> is all my whips this week. And I gotta say, I enjoyed stitching on every single one of these things. Um, 
they're all hard to put down, you know? And it's like, I like working on different things like every day, uh, which means overall things take longer to do because, you know, if you stick to one thing for a long time, then you get it done. But uh, it is what it is. I'm, I'm okay with the number of whips I have. I'm not, I'm not stressed out. I'll buy it yet. So, so we're doing good. Um, okay. So, um, that was all my whips for this week. And now it's time for a little bit of haul. Um, I do have a few charts to show you. Um, some that I actually got recently and some that I forgot to show you before my vacation. Um, and then I have a couple like stitchy tools that I bought recently that I'm kind of, um, excited about. So a couple of these things, these two things I saw actually on, um, Stitcherista's channel. Um, I, uh, this is nothing new, uh, as far as knowing about it. It's just, I hadn't seen them before, um, and didn't know I could get some on Amazon. So I decided to go ahead and get a few. Um, these are Loran uh, tail weavers. Um, I do tend to play flush chicken probably more than I should. Um, basically because uh, if I'm at the very end of a color, um, I hate to have to get a new piece of floss for like two stitches or something like that. So I end up playing floss chicken with that. Um, <clears throat> Threading my needle and getting a new piece of floss is like my least favorite part of stitching, I think. So um, I tend to do play, I do play floss chicken. And so um, I thought I would try these. Um, and I liked that I could get them on Amazon. They were very inexpensive. And then I also saw this from Stitcherista and these are polka dot sticky thimbles. So they are like little rubbery, um, they come in this tin, which is nice because then you can keep them in there and they're reusable. So there's eight, 24, eight times three is 24, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's eight of these guys and they're just little sticky, they're rubbery kind of things. And you can put them wherever on your finger that your needle tends to rub. Um, I don't have that problem that often, although I do have it when I'm doing needlepoint. Going through the canvas can sometimes be uh, more difficult. I also sometimes have that problem, oh, excuse me, in finishing when I'm hand stitching. Um, like when I did my, my uh, cube, which was like both, right? So I was having to stitch through the mono canvas to try and put my cube together. It killed and it usually it's like right here, this, this finger. I have like a little callus here and I think that it might help if I have this kind of thing. So it's just something to try out. And, uh, again, they weren't very expensive. Um, and yeah, so I thought that was kind of a cool thing to get. And then the third little tool thing, this is not, not new. I've gotten it before. These are actually the Clover brand, so they're not snag nabbits, but it's the same thing. And I actually like the Clover brand because you get two in a package and they're two different sizes, but they're the, the needle type things that have the little floss snagger thing on the end so that you can, and they're really pointy on the other end and you, so you can put it through your fabric. If you have, um, you know, sometimes like when you're running your fabric through on the back and then you do a stitch and that little bit comes through and it's hard to get it out. This is how you do it. So you put this through the hole and the little ridgy part at the top will grab the floss and pull it through. So I've gotten these before. I think I've gotten them twice and I cannot find them. So I don't know if they fell on the floor and they're back in a crevice somewhere or if they're in a drawer and I just, you know, have misplaced them or what, but I got them again. And this time I have this little needle box, which I haven't used yet. And I got this as a gift from somebody. Um, Hanukkah, which I don't want to talk about because I know I haven't sent out my Hanukkah gifts yet. It's July. Um, it's been a tough year for me. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't want to talk about it. I know I'm like terrible. Um, it will happen eventually. Maybe by next, by the holidays, you guys will get your holiday gifts. Um, anyway, 
I have this. <laughs> and I'm going to use this exclusively for this kind of needle tool. So things that are like needles, but they aren't needles, I'm gonna use this little box for. Okay, so those are the tools I got. Then charts, I got these uh, before, my, before my trip. I had to order, um, I think some, I had to order some floss or something. So um, while I was on 123 Stitch, um, I had, was in an ink circles mood. I haven't done a lot of ink circles. I have a very Halloween-y ink circles that I will be pulling out in the next uh, month or so when I start doing all my um, Halloween type stitches. And it is something I'm hoping to get done this year. But um, I, I got two uh, small um, ink circles charts um, just because I think they're really pretty patterns and um, wanted to have them. So I got this one, which is Valentina, and this one, which is Aventel. And then these, I did not realize these were in from the Moo the, Moo the Merrier um, line. But they are, and I just thought they were adorable. So I got Slick Fiddle and Hey Diddle. And these are by Ink Circles, but you know, the com two companion charts, uh, you know, Hey Diddle Diddle, the cow jumped over the moon. So you got your cow jump in there. And there's the Hey Diddle Diddle. I don't see the dish in the spoon. Maybe there's a third one eventually, but um, I just really liked them. And I kind of like the Quakery motifs because I don't really do Quakers, so it's kind of a way to have a little bit of Quaker Quakerness. Um, I just thought those charts were really cute. So those are older things, well, like a month old. And then um, when I think I was on my way back while we were driving back from uh, Las Vegas. I saw a thing that 1884 Citry was having, had just gotten a bunch of charts and there were a bunch of them were going in the $2 charts. So while I was in the car, um, I decided to go on and I ordered a couple $2 charts. Um, so I got this one. I don't really feel the need to do a welcome sign, but I just really liked this sort of morning glory. Uh, is it morning glories? Looks like morning glories to me. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. I think they look like morning glories. But anyway, I really like that morning glory border. So I just like get the chart and I can decide later if I decide to do it, if I want to say welcome or want to say something else. Um, I got this, um, Calico Crossroads, um, August cat because I like black cats because my birthday's in August. And honestly, I'm really considering maybe doing this as my black cat birthday sale because I do have those other kitty and me patterns, um, which I really love. But because of the level of uh, whips I have right now, I'm thinking I wanna do my black cat birthday sale as something fairly small that I can maybe get finished in August and be done with it and so I can kind of reset next year and then next year I can do a bigger one. Um, besides, I have a lot of patterns right now with black cats on them because I did black cat, uh, I did my cat mania and everything. So um, I don't have a lack of black cats to work on. So I'm thinking I might do this as my black cat birthday style. And then I can kind of put it into a little ornament for my tree, which I haven't, I haven't done anything on my tree in a couple months. I haven't like even changed it. So it didn't get its red, white, and blue uh, decorations for June and July. Um, so maybe I'll change it in August um, and maybe I'll be able to add this to it. So I'm really thinking maybe I'll do that for my black cat birthday cell. Um, I seem to be missing one pattern. Okay, this is Hudson in case you guys 
we're curious. That's Hudson. I have Logan too, but I'm not going to show you Logan. This is Logan because <laughs> um, he is not comfortable with me showing his picture on my YouTube channel yet, but eventually. And then this is Reagan. Check out the pose. These are actually already, they already look way older than this because this was like months ago already. So those are my, my nieceling and nephews that uh, I love so much. Okay, and then the last two charts that I got, this one is it's called Peace 2001, so that tells you how old of a chart this is, but it's like the lion lying down with the lamb. Um, it's just an adorable chart, and I do like stitching like one lion a year for my birthday. I usually start the lion actually on my birthday, whereas I do my black cat birthday sale for the whole month of August. Um, I already have something for this year. I'm going to do a Mill Hill little ornament that's a lion, I think. But, I mean, that one's really cute. So, maybe next year that will be my lion project. And then the last thing that I got, uh, another black cat. <laughs> but this one's a little bit more uh, fall Halloween-y. It's called Ooh Scary by Hearthside Designs. So, that was my big haul that was under $10. And then my few ink circles patterns from a month ago. And then all of the little tools that I got. So, and then of course I got the fabrics that I just showed you that are for, for uh, Enchantress of the Abyss. Yeah, for me to finally try and figure out what I'm going to stitch that on. Um, so yeah, so that's it for my whips and my haul. Um, plans for the coming week um, as we talked about uh, next Sunday is the first of August so I need to get ready for what what are my August plans gonna be what what um, theme type stuff am I gonna stitch which projects am I gonna pull out which projects am I gonna set aside um, so yeah I have to make those decisions I think I will probably set aside the uh, starburst and stripes um, as much as I love it, uh, it it's probably going to go and, and sit in my drawer for a while until, um, I, until I feel patriotic again, as gorgeous as it is. Isn't that pretty though? It is so pretty. And I really do, I really do love making these and I am really tempted to um, kind of do something like this using this technique with all different like spring flower colors and make some kind of a flower pillow thing. I don't know. I think that would be really pretty and fun to do. It might be a really nice way too to use up some, you know, like scrap floss. So that's in the back of my head. Um, so yeah, so I need to decide what I'm doing for August. Um, what my theme is. What is my theme for August? I did decide, but that doesn't mean that it won't change. Uh, summer fun and mermaid dream. So um, I was thinking about pulling out the Shannon Christine mer mermaids um, and Chances of the Abyss, of course. Um, my black cat birthday style. I have to figure out what I'm doing. Um, I was thinking about maybe starting a new bird project for my friend Tracy. Um, but I'm more likely to start that in September because that's when her birthday is. So, um, yeah. So... And then I might do work on to everything there is a season in August because my it I started that project in honor of my dad and his birthday was um, August 29th. So it's a good time to pull it out so I can think of him a little bit more. Yes, baggy, I'm almost done. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Stitching and deciding on what I'm going to stitch for next week. Um, oh, and then one thing I want to show you guys. Um, somebody had asked me, and actually the same girl that I can't remember her name. Um, and I feel terrible, but she asked me if I ever got a plant for this, and I did. Um, this is a fake plant. <laughs> um, I got it from Kohl's, and I have it kind of on a little box here because it's not quite big enough. But you know what? I think it's just, it's just big enough to look cute, and, um, I don't know. I just really like it. I don't know. If it's too skimpy, if you guys think it's too skimpy, well maybe but I just actually really like it um, 
and it is it is a artificial succulent but um, I am really enjoying seeing this so that is there okay I think that's about it um, I talked about my moving my mermaids into the bathroom I've got my mom up on the wall or leaning on the wall anyway it's in a the pictures in a um, a holder like a, a plate or a frame holder um, and uh, and I and I enjoy it up there because it's like right in my land of sight when I'm in bed so um, yeah I think that's it until I see you guys again enjoy your last weekend of July and please remember to be content be kind and be crafty Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.